Hey guys, it's Kilby Brown. And the Mighty Zest Brown. And, and we, we are, are the, the Property Hats New, New York City team. So today we have a special guest on our podcast, a internationally known, famous, and acclaimed tour guide from New York City. His name is Carrie Gibbs. Wow. Who is your guest? So how are you, Carrie? Well, I'm just wonderful, Carrie said. And Kilby, how are you both doing? We're doing great. Thank you so much. So, Carrie, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into um, the tour guide business? Okay. Well, most of my background before, since I said it was in show business, I work as a nightclub entertainer, a ballroom dancer, um, many things with my late mother. My, my whole family was in the business. My mom was an actress. My uncle was in Vaudeville. My mother worked as pilots. So I met a lot of famous people and did a lot growing up. One day, I had a friend of mine who was in the tourist business. And she said, did you ever think of becoming a tour guide between engagements? And I said, no. And she said, with the people you've met, your knowledge of New York, which is pretty extensive, and your sense of talking to people, why don't you become a licensed guide? So I said, well, I'll think about it. I went and I took the test. I, 12 years later, here I am. And it was the best thing I ever did because I meet people from all over the world and I love sharing my knowledge of New York and its history. Wonderful. And for how long have you been doing it? I've been a licensed guide for 12 years. 12 years, okay. That's fantastic, Carrie. Now, Carrie, I assume right now it's April 15th, so this is during the uh, COVID crisis, so I assume that everything is shut down and you aren't able to work. Is that correct? That's correct. So, like everybody else, we've had a temporary home and life in a time of crisis. Right. And it's many people shopping a little bit, cooking a little bit, and getting back to being with themselves. So, and, and, but some people, I mean, I know people realize it, but New York City, um, the Wall Street used to be one of the big industries, or it still is, but tourism is a huge, huge part of the New York City economy. And you are just kind of just like one example of how um, a shutdown in the economy affects an individual because they basically have taken your, your ability to, to work away from you. Well, that's true. And we know it's going to come back, and it's just a question of when and where. So I'm kind of writing new tours and planning new things. Hopefully, I say by the late spring or early summer, we should all be back on board and tourists will be able to come here again from overseas that's what we're hoping for great so you are planning for your comeback so you are keeping your time you're keeping busy planning your next tours and the spots to be visited that's what you have been doing that's what i've been doing and i've created some very new ones of course i have a lot of very special ones that have been very popular with people that have come to visit my city. Wonderful. So, Kerry, why don't you give us an example, either whatever you want. What are the, your old special ones? What are the new ones? Why don't you tell us a story and, um, and share with the audience some of your uh, wonderful knowledge and experiences about New York? Okay. Well, I have one that I've done for a long time. Great white And I go way back into when they had many follies in New York, many radio studios. Uh, I talk about some of the celebrities I met as a little boy growing up here. I showed him where Frank Sinatra started, where he dined. I go on many, many, many things, and that's a popular one. And, of course, my new one will be Hell's Kitchen then and now because when we grew up, we spent a lot of time as kids in Hell's Kitchen. And it certainly wasn't what it is today. Today, Hell's Kitchen has become extremely trendy with high-end restaurants, enormous rents, and millennials flocking to be there. When we were little there, there were a lot of street gangs, crime, various other vice going on. 
and nobody had money like today. Uh, many speakeasies were very prevalent there, uh, certainly in the 20s, and many famous old-time movie stars, some old-timers might remember the great Alice Faye or George Rafter Ballroom Dance for a Gangster. They were all products of Hell's Kitchen, and George Raft started in all these speakeasies that were prevalent in Midtown before he went to motion pictures. Of course, Alice Faye was a very big musical comedy star in the 30s, and of course, a big star on radio, the great man in Rudy Valley. So we go into a lot of that, and it's really, really uh, extraordinary when I tell people what was there and what they see today. That's, that's amazing. Um, so what do you, so what do you think about, so what do you think about the change? I mean, some people might say it's good. Some people might say it's bad. What, what, what's your opinion about the change? About the changes? It certainly is good uh, because as I say, we remember many neighborhoods, even myself as a little boy, where I couldn't play and it was dangerous. And when I had to get away from the gang of kids, I knew every rooftop and basement that I could come up somewhere and candy store and call my old brother to get me. And, and I can say that about many neighbors in New York today, Meatpacking District, the Bowery. And when I tell people what was there, they don't believe it, but you have million dollar condos, luxury hotels, and high end restaurants. And to myself, certainly, it is amazing the changes that I've seen in my life here. So, Carrie, you do bus tours and you also do walking tours, or maybe a bit of a combination of both, right? Yes, and I also, by the time I meet and greet the ships and I go to the airport and transport people to their hotels. So, I do have many ways I work depending on the demand of my clients. And you get you have clients from that are contacting you. Either they met you and they come back, they're referred to you, or they contact you from all over the world, correct? That's correct. And many people have viewed my website and this tells of course my biography, how I started, how my family started in New York very poor on my head, living in the tenements of the Lower East Side. And, you know, I go into my different tours. Most of my tours really are custom designed. So I find that the age of the people, where they're from, what their interests are. Is it history? Is it architecture? Is it fashion? Is it shopping? Is it shows? Is it 9-11? Is it statual? You know, there's a certain great amount of variables that go into me preparing my tours. Interesting, interesting. Um, obviously, I know you do. You also do tour a tour up in Harlem, correct? That's correct. And when we do that, we talk about all the old nightclubs that are long gone. Harlem was the place in the twenties or thirties, even to the forties, where people flocked to go yeah. to the world famous Cotton Club, see Cab Calloway, Luna Horn, Duke Ellington, be at world famous Apollo, which has been there for eighty some odd years, where all the greats. As R&B started, uh, we go, this is some of the gospel churches. Harlem has a very, very rich history. It's amazing. It's such it's such a wonderful place to be up there. Um, I know from when I first started going to city how, how much it's changed. When I first started working in Manhattan, how much it's changed. And Maris H and I, you know, look at it from the real estate point of view. But you look at it, you know, from a completely different point of view. You look at it from a cultural point of view. You look at it from, um, you know, a celebrity point of view, and also just the, you know, the common man in the street point of view. Um, what's your uh, what's what's your favorite story about meeting a meeting a celebrity in New York City? Well, that's hard to say. I know I had the great pleasure of meeting Mr. Sinatra one time. Wow. And of course, I saw him work in Vegas. I saw his last shows in Radio City. I, I met his wife. I met his son. And I saw him coming and waving everybody. And that's why they called him Old Blue Eyes. He had that great smile, very suntan. And people idolized him. He would, they would throw roses on the stage. It was an amazing energy. 
that Mr. Sinatra had, and I doubt there'll ever be anybody that can top him and his way of performing and telling a story and creating a mood. He certainly knew how to tell a story and create a mood. Um, I don't want to get cut off because I know we have a time limit here, but just before we go into our next story, can you just tell people how they can get in touch with you, how they can contact you? Because once this ends, I'm sure people are going to want to get out, uh, meet you, and uh, learn about New York through your eyes. Certainly. Happy after being for so long in front of the house, people want to be at New York and want to meet. And you're the best person in the world for them to do that. Well, thank you. Well, I certainly look very forward to getting out of the house and exploring New York with them. Uh, however, you can look up my website, www.carrycaryny2aguide.com. It tells you all about me and what I offer. Or you may call me at 917-558-2478. Thanks, Carrie. Really appreciate that information. I know people are gonna they want to get in touch with you. Now, can you give us a little bit of idea of you do from very small groups to very large groups? What's your normal? How do you normally handle the uh, the size of the group, or is, is, is or is it, or is it just kind of like random? Well, that's a good question. Uh, if I do a family, it could be four people. Uh, I have that up to thirty or forty people. I have sound equipment. And of course, from my years of performing and speaking, I know how to project my voice very favorably. So I walk around and make sure everybody is involved with my tour. I always have a strong Q&A session and certainly always a strong photo up. That's fantastic. So the, the person, when you talk to them originally, they would say, Carrie, um, we want to do a 9-11 tour. We want to do a Hell's Kitchen tour, a Lower East Side tour, a Harlem tour. So they kind of give you an idea, or do some people actually ask you to um, give them like a real quick Manhattan overview? Or what's your experience with dealing with different clients? Well, Kelly, that's a good question. Uh, I usually, as I said, they might offer that. If not, I ask questions. This way, I had a group of family that came from down south. They've never been here. And they booked me for two days. We did eight hours a day. Wow. We did, wow. You know, I mean, this is my knowledge and my handling. So, we did Empire State, 9-11, One World Trade, One World Observation. We did a Museum of Natural History, Central Park. I mean, on and on and on and on and on. And uh, it really touched me because at the end, they all hugged and kissed me and thanked me so much for being here. Oh. And that's part of the appreciation that I really enjoyed when they really got something out of it and they really felt their money was well spent. Great. So is there um, one spot that people request you the most to, to, to see? Well, that's a good question. Again, many people love to know about Times Square. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and of course, we talk about somewhere the ball drops. Uh, we show them many, many, I talk about many, many famous theaters that were their movie theaters that are long gone. Uh, years ago, we had Low State, Low Capital, and Rivoli, the Rialto, the Criterion, uh, the opposite of Radio City Music Hall, way back when I was a little boy, was the Roxy. And the Roxy was all gold and red, and it was similar to Radio City with the movies and the court of ballet. I went there when I was a little boy. And what happened, it was ripped down later to build the Time and Life building. But it was very amazing. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much. That's Karen. fantastic. So, Carrie, we're running out of time. So, um, right before we go, we really, really thank you for doing this. Um, just give us your phone number uh, one more time. And then we're going to put this out there. And then when we're up and running, um, people are going to come and Learn New York from you. Okay, thank you. It's my, it was my pleasure to be with you, Marissa and Toby. I give you just a minute and one more time. 558-2478. And I want you both to stay safe, everybody out in the radio audience, and also to say we're strong, we're New Yorkers, we're tough, 
and we will win, and we will get.